Hey everyone, I'm Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with the one, the only, the fantabulous Zach Wild. Thank you America. very much. Thank you very much. That's what I. That's what I tell my wife every day. Exactly like that. Actually, when we wake up in the morning, Katie, me and Barb, I, I just gaze right into her eyes, her gorgeous green eyes, and she looks at me. I look at her, and there's that moment of silence, and then I just go, "You're the lucky winner." You got it. Woo. I remind her every day and she just goes, <laughs> thank you. I'm not, I'm not sure what I want on this contest, but thank you very much. <laughs> and then she takes those beautiful green eyes and just rolls them. Right. Uh, yeah, yes. There's a lot of that going on. Uh, hey, congratulations. Uh, the new album is due out November 26th. It's called doom crew Inc. Correct. Yes. Doom crew incorporated. That would be correct. And uh, it's a bit of a, a two guitar album. Um, let's dive into that. I'm just, um, it just gives me more time to do things I enjoy doing, like getting my nails done, making sure that my rouge and my eyeliner matches my fishnet stockings, things like that. So, you know, but uh, that's, that's the things that I actually enjoy. So that's now you have me conjuring up thoughts of D. Snyder in my head. Come on, let's focus here. Let's focus. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, the whole thing is like this D. Rock. So, but um, no, we had Father Dario playing guitar on the record. So you know, I mean, he's awesome. He's amazing. He, he can play guitar. He sings. He plays piano. He does dishes. He does laundry. He makes an amazing chicken piccata. He prefers capers over salt because he says that the capers it's it's more organic. So. Uh, but yeah, he's he's just absolutely amazing. So and he's he's and he's playing amazing on the record. So everything's amazing. So that's okay. about it. But uh, yeah, but Dario's shredding all over the record. So totally shredding all over the record. At what point, um, or is there ever a point when when y you hear someone else playing guitar, right? And you go, oh, that was awesome. I wish I had thought of that. That was good. Do you well, have yeah. a lot of those moments on this album where you're like, I wish that was my idea? Um, well, that's good because I didn't write any of the songs on these, uh, these, on this record and I actually didn't play on the record. I actually paid a lot of people that, so I could claim that I played on the record, but, uh, so payola is still alive and well, but anyways, no, um, you know, it's so funny. I remember, uh, actually even Neil Pert said it in, uh, in an interview, people said, oh man, I remember reading about. Eric Clapton saying, oh, when I heard Jimi Hendrix play, it made me want to put the guitar down. Or and like Neil Perk goes, whatever I hear a great musician, all it makes me want to do, it inspires me to want to play, which is the way that, I don't know, I, that's the way I always look at it. You know, yeah. you just see, uh, you hear great musicians you want to, that inspires you to, to get better. You know, so yeah, so that's, that's what I always think. Uh, growing up, it's been said that you, well, you've said that you basically come home from school, play guitar, all day and night and basically go to school exhausted, right? How much of your day is spent playing guitar now? Um, well, no, <clears throat> it's still it's still the same passion, but it's just it's just a different a different thing, you know. So I mean, it's just like I think with that, all musicians or you know your your formative years are when you're just putting in the insane hours of the technique of just actually you know working on your technique but i think after you uh, after you apply it now it's just a matter of maintenance and you know I, I still run scales in the morning just like going for a jog in the morning i still love you know having a cup of odin force blend and just shredding you know just going through patterns and going through scales and you know stuff like that or just listening i, I still listen to all the players i've listened to that inspire me that i just think they're awesome i just listen to so whether it's pat martino Joe Pass, uh, Ted Green, um, obviously, you know, Jimmy Page, Tony Iommi, Al Demiola, John McLaughlin, Frank Marino, Robin Trower. I, I still listen to all, you know, Mark Knopfler. I'll put some of that stuff on and just because they're all great. So it's, uh, you know, so you just get inspired by hearing them. But, um, but no, it's, it's just a different thing. It's not so much you sit all day just running scales and patterns like back in the day, you know, when you first start. So um, it's just a different thing now. So now it's more writing and and doing things like that. But it's still, as far as having the passion for playing and writing and creating, yeah, it's, it's, it's still there. 
The new album is due out November 26th. It's uh, Doom Crew Incorporated. Uh, the latest single, I am obsessed with the music video because it looks like it was so much fun. It's uh, for the single Set You Free. And uh, there's bath salts involved and cannibalism. What what more does a music video need? Well, that, I just, uh, you know, told Justin, uh, Justin Reek, he's the uh, father. Justin is a Stanley Krubeck of Black Label Society videos. So, you know, he's been yeah. making videos with us since like 2014. So I said, Father Justin, what I want to do is capture my high school prom <laughs> from 1985 in Jackson Memorial High School in New Jersey. And I think we captured it right down to the bath salts, the way the band looked, and also the guy getting his genitals ripped off and his arms written, ripped off and being beaten profusely. I was there, I witnessed the whole thing, but that was just basically another day in the life at Jackson Memorial High School in New Jersey. It's so good. I mean, truly, um, I love the black and white vibe, um, th the smiles, the smiles on your guys' faces. I mean, it's very infectious, too. I, I can just imagine that it was an it was was that an easy day at the office, let's say. Well, well, put it this way. When when my wife is yelling at me. I tell her that I smile. I go, can we just smile some more? It's infectious to smile and quit yelling at me, you know, but uh. No, it, but it doesn't work. But um, no. But what was the question again? <laughs> or was it another? Yeah, no. It, it was just, at the office, exactly. No, it was another day at the office, and you know, no, we had a great time making it. So you know, but I just I, wanted to make sure it was as authentic as possible to my high school prom. It, I, I also was able to appreciate wow. um, how good uh, everyone looks in a, a bouffant uh, haircut too. Turns out, yes, yes. My actually, my wife she wanted me to keep that on for later on. But, I'm but uh, which I did. So, uh, but no, we, we had a blast making that thing. But actually, we always do whenever we're making any of the videos. So we're gonna make them. We might as well have a good time doing it. Sure. So this is the um, your eleventh studio album with Black Label Society. Um, is there the uh, Dirty Dozen on the horizon? Do you already have your eyes on what's coming up next? Yeah. Well, hopefully they'll continue paying us to keep making these records. I'm still shocked after eleven of them, we're still getting away with it. But uh, amen. Yes, you never know. You know, but uh, hopefully the paint chips and the glue don't wear off and they don't realize what's going on. So, yeah, but obviously, you, get, you know, like Keith Richards said, retire from what? What are you going to retire from? Doing something you love? I don't get it. You know, exactly. so, yeah, you just see, I think all musicians, you just keep playing, keep doing what you love. You know, so just if you keep playing, just keep playing. Can we talk about the pizza oven behind you? Yes, that's where we make all the guitars, right there. It's the guitar pizza oven. Yes, so that's where all the wild audio guitars are made. I just stick them in there and I press a button which one I want, whether it's a Blood Eagle, a Barbarian, an Odin, a Heathen, whatever, it doesn't matter. You just, whatever fiddle you want, we just press the button and they, you stick the wood in there and it just comes out. Yeah, it, it turns out like yeah, all the great guitars are just paint by number and you just have to cook them in there. Yes, yeah, so we just put a, press a button, stick the wood in and it comes out. Now, do you really like to cook? Are you an at-home, like, foodie? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, of course. Well, I mean, who doesn't like cooking? I mean, you know, but nothing. A lot of I, people. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, what am I talking about? The immortal beloved doesn't like cooking. And when she does, it's good. Yeah. But uh, So that's why we want to force her more into it. But, uh, no, yeah, I mean, of course. I, you know, but I just make, you know, kind of simple things. You know, nothing, nothing too insane. I feel like this year has been um, a big year of anniversaries, right? People love hitting all those benchmarks. So there's a lot of anniversaries that have happened uh, this year or recently. Um, last year was the 40th anniversary of your signature bullseye guitar. Um, did you do anything to celebrate that? Well, uh, let me see. No, not that I mean. It's just when I first started playing with the boss, actually, it was, a, it was an accident. So, I mean, it was just... Uh, because I, I remember I wanted the Hitchcock Vertigo. Right. And uh, a buddy, Max of mine, he was um, out here in California. I was just like, Max, can you can you do the the Hitchcock, the Vertigo? And I was, yeah, yeah, Zach, just leave the guitar here. I'll, you know, I was getting ready to do these guitar magazines and stuff like that. I need it done, like, you know, in a week or so. He was like, yeah, just leave me the guitar. I'll, I'll knock out the Vertigo. You know what I mean? The Hitchcock thing. And when I got back, I was like, he's like, yeah, your guitar is right over there. It's done. I lift up the case. It's a bullseye. I go, Max, I wanted the vertigo. This is a bullseye, bro. He just goes, oh, I messed up. <laughs> so that was it. 
Yeah, so that that was it. So I guess I had to, you know, for the rest of history, I guess I guess I'll use this thing, you know what I mean, for the magazine. A so, happy little accident, as a uh, Bob Ross, yeah, the painter, would say. Totally. But you know, now that I got my own guitar company and everything, we I finally got around to doing the Vertigo. So now we have it. So that was the uh, forty years ago that happy accident happened, and well, not forty the- years ago, thirty years ago. What's it, thirty? No. Yeah, no more tears. <clears throat> Well, no, it's no rest for the wicked. That's 1988. I thought that the guitar signature guitar came around in 81. Why am I thinking it was around 81? No, the guitar is from 81. Yeah. But the bullseye was put on it in like 88. Oh, okay. Yeah, 87, 88, you know, for the guitar magazine. But the guitar is a 1981, so that's very good. You did know that. Okay, thank you. Give me something here, Zach. Yes, yes. I I, I applaud you on that. That was it. You got it. It is a 1981 guitar, though. Like you would probably say to your wife, you know, I'm sorry, honey, you're right. You're right. Yeah, well, that, there's a lot of that going on around here, too. <laughs> uh, but you, did, you did mention No More Tears. Um, I mean, we have to talk about that, That the 30th anniversary of No More Tears. Uh, there's a deluxe vinyl, I believe, coming out um, with, some, with something specific with Hellraiser, right? Yeah, well, I know, they, you know, they, they did the mashup with Lemmy and Ozzy, so, which came out slamming. So uh, that came out cool, but... Yeah, I you know I I just have nothing but great memories of us making that record and you know people people always ask they're like oh Zach was it, was it different when you were working on that record from the first one or whatever I go well yeah I mean it was just kind of maybe a little bit more relaxed because the first you know No Rest for the Wicked was my first album with Oz but I mean as far as like uh, you know the drinking and the shenanigans and the and the comedy that just that just rolled over right from no rest for the wicked right to no more tears. So, I mean, it was nothing but comedy all the time. Cause I always said, you know, with Oz, it's a miracle. Any work ever gets done just because we're constantly, all you gotta do is hang out with him for like five minutes. You'll be on the floor crying. Cause he's always taking the piss out of himself and, or whatever else is going on in the world. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's, I mean, he's the best. It's just, <laughs> I was like, if he, if he wasn't, if he wasn't, you know, this legendary front man and singer and everything like that, he'd be, he'd just be, you have to do stand up, you know? So it's just, he's the best. He's hilarious. Has Ozzy had a chance to listen to the new album, the new Black Label Society album? Now he tries, he's, he goes, Zach, I, I really enjoy the new album. I was like, Oz, what song do you like the best? He goes, I like the part before you put it on and when it ends. And I also like the parts in between the songs where it's, just silence. I go, thanks, Oz. And he goes, carry on. Good luck with the record. <laughs> so yeah, I'd expect nothing less. You know. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Are you still doing um, your cover band on the side, the Zach uh, Sabbath? Of course. We play weddings. We play bar mitzvahs, you know, circumcisions. We do it all. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, Zach Sabbath's the best. It's just, it's hilarious because I, you know, me and Blasco would talk about it. I go, and Joey, I go, here I am, when I was 15 years old, 16 years old, I was playing keg parties, playing these, playing NIB and War Pigs and everything like that. And here I am now, 54 years old, and I'm still playing NIB and War Pigs, except there's a couple more people at the keg party. But uh, yeah, it's still- And it pays well, a hell of a lot better now. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. We, we have a blast with it every time we go out. It's great. Um, so the, the tour is happening this fall and I believe it ends, um, with a big party. Um, you have a new year's Eve show in Tempe, Arizona. What does like, what does a new year's Eve party for Zach wild, uh, look and sound? Well, like? I, I think that, you know, I mean, when we're doing a new year's Eve gigs, I, I, I love whether, you know, we, the last one we did was with Oz, you know, before yeah. that was the last gig we actually did was uh, at the forum, uh, like an Oz fest gig at the forum. We did Zach Sabbath out in the parking lot. And then we played with the boss later that night. So uh, but I remember Oz was going, man, this is great. Oz was like, we should do this every year. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, why not? So uh, that was before he banged himself up. But, you know, we got him. He's doing his therapy and he's doing everything to get his his squat, his, you know, his bench and his deadlift numbers back up so we can get him back out on the lifting platform. But, uh, no, I mean, you know, when we've done the Black Label New Year's Eve gigs, it just mm-hmm. – it's just a great, great excuse to get together and hang out with, with all your friends, you know what I mean? Do, do, and doing a show. I, to me, it's the best way to do it. 
What do uh, what do rehearsals um, look like for Black Label Society when you're gearing up to go out on the road? Um, well, you know, uh, once again, we hired Paul Abdul to work with us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. our choreography. It's not funny. high kicks. <laughs> There's nothing funny about that. It's just she's she's grueling. She really <laughs> she makes things happen. So, I mean, the whole thing is uh, um, I'm looking for, I have some ideas of the choreography I want, but usually she always comes in with great ideas. So. You know, we listen to her because that's what she's she's amazing at it. So, and you got to have um, matching like boy band outfits too, I suppose. Yeah, we we try it on. I mean, if it looks cool, then we'll do it. You know, kind of like in the video, the set you free video. You know, if it if we like it, you just go with it. But uh, but no, so you know, it's a lot of dancing, and you know, I'm doing a lot of cardio because you know, dancing and singing at the same time, it's not easy. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into it, and then you know, like I said before, matching our our rouge and our eyeliner with our, you know, nail polish and our fishnets. I, it, it's very time consuming. We, some, uh, eventually we get around to playing, but I mean, we, we focus on the important things. The rehearsal studio just smells like Axe body spray, basically. <laughs> exactly. And a lot of oil of Olay. You know, we use a lot of that too. Uh, I see you're sipping on what I assume is coffee. Uh, dare I ask, yeah. is it Death Wish <laughs> coffee? Of course, it's Valhalla Java, Odin Forest Planet. I go through about maybe, I don't know, eight pots a day. It's good. Dude, I'm telling you, I actually, the Death Wish people sent me a whole case of, of their coffee. And I, I mean, I am I still have the shakes months later. Yes, it's amazing. It tastes amazing. And then you realize you have a couple cups and then you're, you've already, before brunch, you vacuum the house 14 times, clean the dog run, done the dishes four times. Even though everything's spotless, you still do the dishes, you know? So, uh, we yeah. the shelf for Ikea. Might as well. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Oh, my goodness. All right. So uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm Katie Darrell. He is Zach Wilde. We're talking about the latest and greatest album from uh, the Black Label Society due out November 26th. It is called Doom Crew Inc. Incorporated, uh, the 11th studio album from the band as well. Uh, let's talk about your fans. Black Label Society fans are pretty diehard, and I feel like they almost rival the dedication of the Kiss Army. Dare I say that? Oh, but there's a, you know, the Kiss Army is pretty brutal. It's just massive. But uh, no, I mean, in regards to, uh, yeah, I, I would say with our Black Label fan, it's not fans, it's fams, so as in family. So our almighty Black Label family, I mean, it, it's awesome. I mean, it really, it's just this one gigantic community that's taken on a life. It's this living, breathing thing, So I, it, it, which is awesome. So you have all types of people hooking up with, uh, actually all over the world. I mean, like when we're doing shows, when, you know, we'll be rolling with the UK chapter and they'll have friends that came over from Boston just because they've gotten in touch, you know, through social media and then just mm -hmm. talking or whatever. And now they're, they're like best friends. So now they're just like, oh, dude, we're going to road trip it. We're going out to England. We'll go see the band and then, you know, and then hang out after that. But I mean, the, the thing is that brought them together was the band. So, I mean, which is great. So, you know, you could be rolling, seeing somebody in a in a pub wearing, you know, uh, wearing a black label beanie and it's just like next thing you know he's the best man at your wedding eight years from now so which is great i love it it's bigger than me and it's 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 you know like you said our almighty black label family uh zach you were raised catholic the holiday season is upon us i need to know what is what does christmas feel like in your household oh it's amazing and, and you know bringing up my catholicism i remember when i when i got my first black sabbath record and uh, we sold our souls for rock and roll. I put it on and I was Catholic when I put it on. I, by the time I got halfway through the record, I had become a full blown Satanist. And then upon the ending of the album, when it ended, I converted back to Catholicism just so I could thank God for creating Black, Black Sabbath. True story. I, 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 so the album that saved your soul, man. Yes, that it is. It really did. But uh, it was quite the production, but it was without a doubt well worth it. But uh, and I, I still thank God every day for creating Black Sabbath. But uh, no, I mean, the holidays are great around here, without a doubt. They're the, they're the best. I mean, are you are you the house on the street that gets mega decorated out front or you do keep it kind of casual? Um, no, we go. But the, the houses that are down near us, they, they have full blown streets. 
that are that are done up. Every year we've always taken the kids out. They they love it. Well, I hope everyone grabs a copy of Doom Crew Inc., the new album from the Black Label Society, uh, wraps it up and they place it under the Christmas tree because it's an awesome album. Um, good job. Congratulations. You did Thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for okay. spending time with me today, Zach. I appreciate it. Oh, it was great talking to you, Dal. Take care. Thanks for everything. Hey there. Thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know. Just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into. Or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.